Hey, okay, so really, really cool video today. We're going to do a look at some workflow, um, some workflow procedures in Lightroom. Um, and it's, it's a video I've been meaning to do for a while, uh, and it's basically just going to give you some shortcuts, some simple techniques just to work through if you come back from a shoot and you've got a million photographs to then edit. So what we're going to do is we pop into Lightroom. Uh, I've got uh, how many photos have we got here? Uh, 400, 400 photos uh, from a car show that I went to uh, a few months ago. Um, they're all pretty, pretty close in exposure wise, um, but you'll see there's plenty of different style of photos. And what we're going to do is we're going to do something uh, called auto sync when we're editing and developing them. Um, right, we've got. If we have a quick look through, I want to try and find just to, just for this demonstration. I want to find seven, six or seven photos, and I uh, want to try and make them as different as we can. So straight away we've got we've got this one here, which we're going to take off. This is going to be our uh, kind of daytime photo. So we're going to have that one. Let's pick up nighttime one. These guys shooting. Let's have that one. Uh, sorry, not shooting, playing. Uh, we'll have a daytime portrait. Do -do -do -do, that one will do, Mr. John. Do -do -do. Scan through. This was working uh, at a scrapyard. Uh, let's scroll down. Let's try and find some nighttime stuff. Um, so, what we're going to be doing, we're going to try and find all these photos. And just for the purpose of this exercise, we're just going to do six or seven. And we're going to normalize them or make them so that we can then do our funky cool edits. Let's take, there we go, let's have an overexposed slightly daytime portrait and we'll have a bit of nighttime work going on. And let's get a car as well, let's get that car shot. Yep, that'll do. Um, and let's get the shadowy one there as well. Okay, so what we're going to do, we'll do that. We'll label those as a yellow. So we've just labeled them as yellow, just press the number seven. Uh, so they will all now, if we go down to the filter and hit the filter, and we've got all these photos. Now, hopefully, you'd agree that these are pretty much very different photos. We've got nighttime photo there, we've got a nighttime photo there with lots of colour in, nighttime photo with uh, not so much colour, we've got an overexposed daytime portrait. Uh, a reasonably well exposed data on portrait photo of a car during kind of like a grey miserable kind of time and a steaming fast uh, photo of a car here uh, and just want to check yep just wanted to check there that there hadn't been any any edits done on that so what we're going to do if we select all these, now this is going to work for basically we're going to do this on the entire shoot, but for this exercise we're just going to use these eight. So if we go into the develop module and get that out of the way, okay. So we've got the develop module here, and what we're going to do is we're going to pick one of these photos and we're going to edit it. So let's pick, let's pick the nighttime one, okay. So what we want to do. Uh, these haven't been reset, so let's reset all these. So it's this bit down here. This is the auto sync. So that is what you may well see at the moment. Uh, sync dot dot dot, and that I'm, I'm sure you've used it before. Uh, you've edited one photo, you've selected that photo, and you press sync, and it brings up this synchronized settings box, and you say yes, I'll sync the crop. No, I don't want the color adjustments. No, I don't want the clarity. Blah blah blah. blah. Well, what we can do instead. If you hit this little toggle switch here, it changes it to auto sync, and um, we're just going to reset all the, okay, reset all the settings there. So we're back to absolutely out of the camera. Okay, all right. And before we do that, let's just have a quick cup of tea. Those of you in America may recognise the mug. Apologies because it's got tea in it. Ah, all right. So let's put this photo. What we're going to do. Uh, we're going to check the exposure. The exposure is a little bit dark, so we're going to push the exposure up a little bit. Remember, we've got this auto sync on. So, what we're going to do to this photo is going to happen to all the photos that we've got selected. So, your entire shoot, for sake of argument. Okay, so we're just going to push the exposure up slightly. Um, I'm going to pull the blacks down a little bit just to add a little bit more contrast. And, but then, to compensate, 
Just push the shadows up and just push the highlights up a little bit as well with the whites. Uh, clarity in Lightroom 4 is awesome, so we're going to push that clarity because what I really like is a little bit of clarity. Uh, it's a little bit cool, so we're going to push the white balance up as well. For the sake of argument, let's use the color picker, the temperature picker. So we'll pick that and we'll pick a kind of a do -do -do -do, pick a grey grey there. So this, this side here is where the light's coming from, so that side should be slightly greyer. And there we go, it's just warmed it up a little bit. Um, and something that I tend to do on all my photos, um, I'll push the vibrance up a tiny bit and just pull the saturation back a tad. Um, so that's that's the kind of the photo that we've got. Um, we've done a little bit of exposure, we've changed the exposure, uh, we've changed the white balance, um, drop the blacks down, uh, push some more detail back into the shadows, uh, add a little bit more exposure on the highlights, clarity, pump the vibrance and pull back on the saturation. But what, what's it done to the other ones? So let's have a look at the other ones. Uh, you'll see, because we pushed the exposure up, it's pushed the exposure up on that one. Um, exposure's gone on that one. Exposure on that one's not too bad. That one's pretty good. That one's pretty good. And that one's pretty good. So basically all we've done is we've then pulled back and got these two here, which now need pulling back on the exposure. So we can pull back on the exposure on these two. That's that one there. And let's check on this one as well. So now that's those two done as well. Um, and let's just do this nighttime one. The nighttime one's okay. Let's do the two car ones. So we're working in batches pretty much. So we've done we've done all of them. And these two car ones we want to add a little bit more vibrance to it. Just get those colours popping out a bit more, especially in this one. And we're going to add uh, pull some more black in. There we go. Okay, so now we've done the other two as well. Okay, so basically what we've done, we've worked on all the photos, this was the first one that we did, uh, we tweaked that one, what did we tweak on that one? We tweaked the exposure, uh, the highlights, the shadows, the whites, the black levels, pushed the clarity up a little bit and then did the vibration, uh, vibrance and saturation. That happened to all the photos. We then picked out the two which were overexposed, so these two here, uh, selected those two, but all, all we had to do with those was pull the exposure back, everything else was already done. Um, and then the two car ones, all we had to do were those because the, the wide balance was done, wide balance was good, uh, the exposure was uh, this, the exposure was good in the end. Um, all we did was pull the blacks down a little bit and push the vibrant because I like the cards to be a little bit more punchy. Uh, but if you then expand that idea across your entire shoot, so if we get rid of this like that and we get all these photos up, okay, Let's go into the library, get the grid view up. If we get all these photos up and then go into the develop module from here, we'll just pick one. Uh, so we're going to do, let's say we want to do uh, all the nighttime ones. So we've got all the nighttime ones here. You can see them all pretty much because they're, they're all done in shoot uh, in time order. So we've got all the nighttime ones here. Use a little bit of flash on these ones as you can see. So if we get all these sorted, bang, 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 uh, and do exactly the same as we were doing, set the exposure, set the white balance right, do all the little tweaks that we like to do, so pull the blacks back, uh, add the shadows up to compensate for that dark black, uh, push the clarity, that's going to do it on every single photo. We're then going to go through, we're going to find another set which are the same, so we've got X all the way through to let's say all the way through to there so all those photos there are all daytime portraits, daytime kind of like environmental portraits so we're sitting here, we're, we're at a uh, scrapyard and we're, we're doing some work on one of the cars there, we're taking off uh, the rocker covers um, we can then tweak those very very slightly so what might that need? That might just need a little bit more contrast on it Dun, bang, bang, bang. and just warm it up just slightly and um, yeah, there we go. So we've sorted. We've sorted another. How many have we got selected? Twenty-eight selected. We've sorted another twenty-eight photos out. 
just like that. Uh, we're then going to scroll across. We're going to see the next kind of batch. The next batch here, we've got all these uh, aeroplane photos. So the aeroplane came across. So we've got all these ones. What we might we do here? Well, we need to push the shadows up a little bit, etc., um, etc. Et next sap. We've got more down here. This is all kind of environmental portraits again. So that could have been done with the last lot. Kind of select as as large as you can. You go out as large as you can, and then once you get towards like the cars at the end, picking on these little photos of the cars. This was shot at twentieth of a second. So these cars are going pretty quick. It's panning nice and sharply as best as I could. And once you got to these cars at the end, we've done so much on everything else that all the cars need. Is a little bit of a vibrant splash. So basically, what I've been trying to help with is bring you into the world of auto sync, selecting as many photos as you can, select all the photos, and then go back into your library. And then once you've done all your generic work, um, then you can go back in and select a group. So we'll select all the cars. Ding, ding ding, all the cars on the track. Then we're going to go. Oops, sorry. Select all the cars on the track. Go back into the develop module and do some edits purely for those cars. So maybe we'll push the vibrance up a little bit and pull down the blacks just to add a little bit of pump and uh, a little bit of oomph. So there we go. Hopefully that has helped, and that hopefully if you just have a tw have a try, have a twy, I'm Jonathan Wass already, uh, have a try and have a play with that, and hopefully it's going to speed up your workflow. So yeah, there we go. Auto sync. This is what you'll probably have seen. Sync dot dot dot, and that's the uh, bringing up this synchronized settings option box. You don't want that. It's far better and a lot less, loss, lot fewer clicks. Just to toggle that button there and have auto sync on, and then you can do lots of work to lots of photos and then narrow it down to lesser ones and then of course at the end of the shoot you might have where one of some of my favorites at the end of the shoot you're going to end up with a handful of your favorite edits here yeah, that's one of my favorite ones where's another one uh, not that one where are we that one this is one that i've sold as well so you'll end up with a handful of photos which you can then pull off uh, and really, really work on. Um, but the vast majority of the legwork has already been done. So hopefully that has helped you out. Uh, have a play. Let me know what you think down below. Remember to check out my Facebook page now as well, which is Chris Frost in Photography on Facebook. Pop me a like on there. Send me any messages or questions or opinions that you've got on there, uh, anything that you'd like me to do in future videos, and uh, hopefully see you again soon. Thanks very much, guys. See you later. Thank <laughs> you.